Good day, everybody. My name is Kevin Hogan. I'm the author of The Psychology of Persuasion, The Science of Influence, and 21 other books that have been translated into 41 languages all around the world. Today, hypnotic storytelling using narrative transportation to take your listener or your reader to where you want them to go every single time. It's really important to think of stories as being two kinds. There are boring stories, that's the 95, 98 percentile. We don't have an exact number, let's call it 95 percent. That's being generous. And then we have the persuasive or the compelling or the consuming story. Now, these two kinds of stories have been studied by scientists and particularly the last uh, 10 years, especially with the, um, the, the onset of, of uh, internet marketing, online marketing, and uh, generating great stories that command attention in a super crowded marketplace. A persuasive story is a story where every single aspect of the story is on purpose. It's intentional. It's been structured, created, developed, and told with you, in this case, the listener in mind. And over the series of videos, I'll tell you a few stories that you can then use as templates to create your own that you can tell other people. Hypnotic stories bypass critical thinking. So if I tell you to go and get a new job or go over there and buy something or any of those kind of things, if I tell you what to do, the probability that you're gonna to want to listen immediately is small. But if I tell you a story and you identify with the character in the story about how this person went over there and bought this thing or asked a girl out like that or did something along those lines and you resonate with that character and if I tell you a story that's plausible that your imagination can grab onto it and if I can hook your attention at the beginning and there's really only a couple of ways to do that. If I do those things, you're gonna be with me the whole time and you're gonna love that story, especially if it has the ending that we desire. Now, let's look at some things and take some notes here. First of all, a great story, a seriously, beautifully told hypnotic story, one that transports the listener to where you want them to go, is one that um, the listener identifies dramatically with the main character. The listener identifies in a dramatic fashion with the main character. This is really important. So when you're telling a story, whether the story is about you or it's about somebody else, you have to tell it in such a way that the person who's listening to your story identifies and resonates with that character. And where does that come from? That comes from the empathy that's generated by you as the storyteller through the character as the story happens to the character and as the, st as the character happens to the story, you, the listener, the listener in this case over here, listens and they identify with the character because of empathy. They feel for the character. They don't want that character to experience this. They want them to experience this. That's how you have the beginning of a hypnotic story that narratively transports. Then there's also the plot. The plot is the story. The plot is today is what is today? Today's Wednesday and uh, I'm preparing for several online courses as well as some teleseminars today and I have to do these things in a specific order. Okay. Now imagine that somebody comes up to the door with an emergency. Somebody's dying outside and I have to go and leave you and I have to go race out really fast and get out of my coat and tie and get instead I got to uh, grab wet towels on the way out and my cell phone and hit 911 and call and get the police over here to check this whole situation out and all that kind of stuff. Right. So that's what could happen. Happen. That's a story happening to a character, me. And you were there with me for a second, right? And so that's an imaginable plot, but it also has to be imaginative. In other words, it has to be something that the listener can really picture in their mind, that they can feel and empathize, hear, feel, taste, touch, picture in their mind, but it also has to be imaginative enough that it's unique enough or surprising enough or mysterious enough or curious enough to where they're going to want to listen to see what happens. By the way, there was nobody outside, so I don't know what happened in that future story there, okay? So those are the first 
pieces of hypnotic storytelling. Okay, so you have to have, number one, you've got to have the listener identify with the main character. That's huge. That happens through empathy. If you're telling your story in such a way that it builds empathy, you're going to be halfway home. Then comes the plot, and the plot has to be imaginable and imaginative. Next up, the story must be one that has no critical evaluation of the message that you're trying to convey. We tell stories for a purpose. Our goal is to cause someone to want to do business with us, or to go out with us, or to marry us, or not to marry all of us, but to marry one of us, or to, to, to do some specific thing. That is our goal. That's our outcome that we have in mind. So we don't want any scrutiny. We don't want any evaluation of the message. We want the message and the, the, uh, the, the empathy to be there in such a way that the person, you in this case, listening, would immediately accept the idea of the concept of the story. Now, if there's narrative transportation, if it's a truly hypnotic story, there will be no evaluation. Now, this requires a third element to happen, okay? And that's the likelihood that the events in the story could happen. If you tell a story that's so fantastic and so wild and so impossible to believe for that person, they're not going to be taken into the story and consumed by it. So the story has to be real. And the best way to make a real story, if you're telling a story about yourself, an autobiographical story, is to just make sure that the events actually happened in the story that you tell. Pretty simple, huh? Now, in fiction, it's a different story. And so is creating a, a story that your, your brand or your website or your business or yourself would be revolved uh, woven into, we'll say, we'll say, or revolve around. But the likelihood that events could happen or that they have happened as you describe it is massively huge, okay? So now, is the story going to work that we're telling? Is the story going to work? Well, first of all, it will have a better chance of working if your audience or the person who is listening to you is familiar with the basic topic. So if you're telling a story about how you went to um, this art fair, okay, an art fair. I went to an art fair once about a million years ago with my roommate. I didn't want to go. I probably wouldn't go today. I don't know anything about art, no more about art than I do about automobiles. But if I knew about art, then you telling me a story of what happened at the art fair is something I could imagine as a backdrop. That would be beautiful. But if you tell me a story about the art fair and what happened in this dramatic story that happened, but I know nothing about art or art fairs, and I can't even imagine what it would be like in my mind, you have no chance of making the connection. So what is going to cause that connection to be greater? Well, that's what we're going to talk about throughout the series and in the very next video. I'll see you there.